This is an old Panasonic DVD S35. It's just a straight DVD player that will play MP3 and WMA CDs and will play JPEG photos on CD. It also play DVD video and it will play DVD RAM discs. It's one of the few that Panasonic made that would play DVD RAM discs made by their DVD recorders. And this one doesn't work. Let's see if we can fix it. This is my old Panasonic DVD S35. This is just a basic DVD player, but it does have the ability to play back DVD RAM. And this player stopped working a number of years ago. So it was just put on a shelf in the back of my closet for me to dig out and show to you guys today. And we're going to see if we can get this one to play back DVD RAM or regular disc. It won't play anything. So let's uh, pop this one apart. I have not looked at this unit. It hasn't been touched in years. But I can confirm that it does not work and that's why I took it out of service all those years ago and just stuck it on a shelf. Now you're probably wondering why this just being a regular run-of-the-mill DVD player, why I didn't just scrap this thing. Well, the reason I didn't scrap it was because this is one of the few that supported DVD RAM playback. So I was always intent on seeing if I could get it to work again. This has lots of hours because what I used to use this machine for, as I explained in the last video, I used to record all my programs on DVD RAM. I had my DMRE20 programmed when I only had one DMRE20. I ended up getting another one, but and I ended up replacing this with the second DRM-E20. But um, I used to record everything on my DMRE20 recorder on DVD RAM or DVD Dash R if it was something I was going to keep permanently. But most TV shows were just done on DVD RAM because I just watched them once and erased them. And then they were played on this unit. And then the discs were erased and used again. So this thing has lots and lots and lots of hours on it. As you can see, the, the box is mostly empty. Power supply looks to be good. I don't see any bulging caps or anything on this unit. The problem is probably going to be the optical pickup. More than likely, the problem is the optical pickup. Or the motor that spins it. Let's take a look at the optical pickup on this unit. There it is. And this would be a dual laser pickup because this will play CDRs. At least it should play CDRs. It supports WMA and MP3 playback. So those will be recording, recorded on a CDR disc. If we turn it on, it should uh, move the laser back, which it does. Let's uh, first of all just try playing a regular, I'll try both a uh, burned DVD as well as a pressed DVD. So let's just try the different discs in it and see what it does. I have here a copy of Borat, one of the funniest movies I think I've seen in a long time. Very crude and very funny. Let's see whether it will read Borat. Love it how they made it look like it was bootleg. <laughs> and that's all it appears to do on any disc. And then it'll just stop. But that's all it does. It doesn't matter if I put a CD or a DVD or a DVD RAM or a DVD R. Any disc I put in, it just does that. It just spins up, speeds up, slows down, speeds up, slows down and then stops. Notice something on here is it uses one motor to both open and close the disc tray as well as uh, operate the laser. If I turn it on you'll notice that this gear here is going to rotate to move the disc into place but if I open it it's the same gear 
that it's used to open and close the actual mechanism. I'm going to pull the mechanism out. I just want to take a look at look at it, and I'm going to maybe give this motor a good run and make sure it's not something in the motor that's uh, causing a problem on this unit. So say it's been sitting for for so many years. Uh, this unit is it's all digital tracking, so there's no adjustments on this one whatsoever as far as adjusting the uh, the pickup. There might be a laser power adjustment on it. I'm not, sh not sure. These were units that I never really serviced uh, when I was in the service business. Uh, when was this one made? This was made in 2000. I think this was 2000. Yeah, 2003. So this was right when I was getting out of the business. I left the the business in in uh, 2003. I left the business in what was it June? I guess it was 2003. So I never really got a chance to work on any of these machines because, well, I left the repair business and I just used this myself until it stopped working and then put it away and moved on, as they say, like everybody else. Let's get all the screws out. Should just pop open. There we go. And this is probably held in place by one more screw somewhere. Lift the whole board out, it looks like. Looks like it's attached to the whole entire circuit board. Let's undo that plug. So I gotta lift the board out. I gotta unplug it here, make sure the power's off, which it is. Unplug it from the power supply. I gotta remove uh, these screws here. As the board is attached to the mechanism on the bottom, remove those two screws. And then uh, three more screws from the back. People may think I'm an expert on DVD players, but actually I'm not because I never serviced them. The shop that I worked at, the owner would not he would not invest in equipment for uh, DVD players. They were basically a throwaway item. So if a DVD player was broken, it was uh, tossed out. We didn't do any repair on them. Didn't change laser pickups, didn't do anything. You can see this one's got two shorting tabs for the infrared and the visible laser. What I want to do on this one is I'm going to uh, apply my power supply across the motor here and give this thing a good run. So to do that I'm going to unplug the power connector that connects the motor over to the servo circuit as I don't want to uh, burn anything out and then I'm going to get my power supply we'll clip it across the motor and I'm going to let this thing just scream. I think that might be the problem. This is putting out a lot of vibration. It might be the motor that's going bad on this. We'll open up the this tray by just pushing the laser all the way forward. That lowers down the mechanism so I can check out the spindle motor.
apply power to this thing again with the uh, top off. I haven't put all the screws back in. I just want to see what, what, what it will do. If it does anything different. Now that I've uh, spun the motor up to 10,000 RPM. which kind of reinforces my thought that it might be a motor problem and just uh, spinning it up like that like as fast as I did has uh, cleared out some of the crud that might be in the bearings because uh, the unit is now displaying a picture if we look over at the uh, at the monitor it's now displaying the opening scene for Borat. Let's open it. I close it. Let's see if it'll read again. Yeah, it's going to read again. Let's try it with some of the other discs I've got here got this DVD RAM disc which I'm sure it just has TV recordings on it we'll see whether it plays that one next oh boy I gotta copy this disc I definitely have to copy this disc I recorded I used to record a lot of stuff off of TV and this is something that I've forgotten that I've had and I haven't been able to watch it you watch this thing the, the thing will actually spin up and slow speed up and slow down this is a, a concert that I recorded off of uh, Cool TV, which is a TV station that's no longer here. It's, uh, I think it's the Montreal Jazz Festival. So, yeah, it's the Montreal Jazz Festival. I'm a big jazz fan, so I used to record all this stuff. So, I got this concert recorded on here that I'm gonna, I gotta, I gotta archive this for sure. I forgot, I totally forgot that I had this. But uh, here it is playing a DVD RAM disc now we look at the display on the front of this thing actually it's quite nice to have this DVD player just just working as a player because it hasn't worked for a long time and there we go all the problem with this was the uh, spindle motor just uh, either from sitting around not being used or just from excessive use I mean this this machine does have does have lots and lots and lots of hours on it that's for sure if we look at the front panel here I've got I can zoom in I have a zoom control on here uh, I can skip to the next program which is like it, it puts a um, I guess a, a track every five minutes or so but here I'll show you the logo this is not actually there's another program on here I'll show you the logo this this was a cable TV station here that was uh, in Canada called Cool TV that went off the air and they uh, played the coolest music videos that you'd ever see. Go back to program one. I only have two programs on this. Program one and program two. That's how quick it searches. It's pretty pretty quick. Let's uh, see how well this unit uh, will play an MP3 audio CD recorded on a DVD dash R. There we go. On the TV, it will tell me it should say it's an MP3 disc. 119 tracks and it'll tell me even what the tracks are
problem is the track name is so long, right? It's it's got the name and of the artist in the track as well as the, the group. It's got the album title, so I guess I didn't encode this right when I put it together. So it it should have the group saying Russ Freeman and the Rippingtons and the track on there, just just the track name. But when it was when it was recorded, the track has everything in it, and it's just running out of space on this one for this disc. So as I skip through the tracks, it'll tell me what album it's on or what group. So this is this is the second folder. There now we're on the third folder. It tells me it's an MP3. It's not showing there. Now you can see it. But uh, yeah, it uh, plays MP3 as well as regular audio CDs and WMA CDs. Standard DVDs, it'll do, I believe, video CD as well. Yep, it'll, uh, I think it does video CD. But uh, normal DVD video, the strength, of course, to this one was the ability to uh, play back the uh, DVD RAM discs, which, as we saw in the previous one, were these ones. Now, this one would not accept them in the, in the cartridge, so those cartridge discs, they actually had to be taken out of the cartridge to load into this. But uh, I used to use these free standing discs for uh, the, the recordings I was going to play back on this one as a rule. And the cartridge based ones were used on the other decks. We'll dig out the DMR E20, the other recorder. Uh, I've got two of them. I'll dig out the one that uh, is not working properly and we'll do a video on that one and see if I can get that one working. I think it may just be a belt on that one because they use actually use a computer drive inside the uh, deck itself. It was the first generation of the DVD recorders. Now this is 2003, I believe the DMR E20 was, uh, it was a few years earlier than that. It was like around 1999 or 98, somewhere in there. But uh, it was one of the earliest of the standalone DVD recorders that would record on DVD RAM and DVD dash R only but very good quality we'll take a look at that one on a future video this one here is now operational again and I didn't really need to do too much to this thing just to put about 11 and a half 12 volts onto the motor and spin the crap out of it get that motor that was uh, not behaving to behave more than likely it's a, either the bearing was getting a bit gummed up or the uh, the rotor or the brushes were sparking a bit and causing the speed to fluctuate and it wasn't locking in but as you can see now it's working thanks for watching